Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back to another FIFA 22 video where today I'm going to be sharing with you what I think are the best custom tactics along with the best formation that is in the game right now. And as you can see, without further ado, let's go straight into it. It is the 4 triple 2 This is what I think is the best formation. This is my favourite formation in the game. It was my favourite formation last year in FIFA and I think it is the best formation in the game this year. It's very, very close for me between this and the 4-2-3-1. I think the 4-2-3-1 is an absolutely brilliant formation as well. But for me, this just edges it a little bit. I just think it's a little bit better offensively and just maybe suits the way that I like to play FIFA a little bit better. Now, the 4 triple 2 how do you need to play it? Now, you need to play it in an attacking way because it's not the most defensive formation. It's not the best in terms of defense. I find that depending on how you play with those DMs, it can be a little bit more open. So I think you have to play in an attacking way. If you're someone who likes to play Tiki Taka, someone who likes to have good possession, this is a very good formation. It's good at counter-attacking. It's very good at doing everything bar really being a solid, tough to break down formation. So going into the tactics, these are the tactics that I settled on. Now, defensive style balanced as always. I don't like to play on a press. And like I said just now, it's not the best formation in terms defensively. Uh, I don't find it's the most solid formation defensively. So playing on a press, any kind of a press is going to make it a little bit tougher to break down. So I keep it on balance. Now, the width... On around about 50 i don't really change that too much because i find that if anything you'd be better off going with a more narrow defensive width because crossing isn't really super op it can be in some scenarios but it's not like the meta is to go down the wing bang crosses in you win headers sometimes yes if you get good space you can go down the wing there might be a player at the back post who's completely free that can happen but i think if anything you're better off going with a slightly more narrow width because it's going to make the middle of the pitch a lot more compact and it's going to force people out so i do think maybe going a bit narrower on around about 40 is the way to go Depth, I'm playing on around about 65 at the moment. I do have some better centre-backs. got Gomez and Van Dijk now. So we do have some better centre-backs that can cope with a little bit faster strikers. But this one's really dependent on how comfortable you feel. It's not really an exact figure that you have to stay with. Now, I like 65 because I like to have uh, my players to be a little bit higher at the pitch. Can occasionally mean that I, I am left a little bit open for counters from time to time. But I think if you have fast centre-backs and you're a decent defender, you can play higher. If you maybe have slightly slower centre-backs and you're not as good at defending, then maybe play a little bit lower. But 65 is my comfortable depth at the moment. So in terms of the build-up play, we are on slow build-up. Now, this is how I like to play personally. I don't like to rush my attacks. I find that, especially now that we've got a foot champs weekend under our belt, I managed to finish 16 and 3, so I last gave my last game away to someone for that extra win for hopefully improve their weekend. But I had a good weekend, but one of the problems I had was sometimes occasionally I'd get sucked into playing how other people played. Like I play really fast and I'd just uh, rush my attacks. Now that doesn't really suit the way I've played because if I'm playing on slow build up and you're playing really, really fast and you're trying to rush forwards, you're going to have no players. You're going to get the ball to your strikers and they're going to have no support because you're on slow build up. So if you choose slow build up, you do have to build up your attack slowly. You can't rush. And that really suits my my strength. And I think suits the game this year. I think people that play sort of the more fast paced, hectic FIFA are struggling a little bit this year because the game play, the game, the, the game speed is a little bit slower. And to be successful, I think playing a little bit slower is the way to go. Now, in terms of chance creation, this is where I've made a change. I was with my 4 triple 2 formation playing on direct passing. Now, one of the problems that I was having when playing in foot champs was my strikers were, and not just strikers, when you get into the final third, all of your attacking players, whether that be your DMs, whether that be your wide cams or the strikers, they all make runs in behind. And the problem with that is sometimes you can be on the ball with the midfielder, like I was on the ball with Pogba a couple of times. You try and look for a pass. Maybe the guy's defending all the passing lanes. All your players now run offside and you have no one to pass to. You get tackled, bang, you counter, and then one down. That happened quite a lot. So I didn't want to have that to happen anymore, of course. So I decided to try on balanced. And this was a lot better because it still meant my players would make runs in behind. 
just not so many. Not and, and the thing is, you only want certain players. I only want really my strikers to run in behind. I don't want my DMs and I don't want the cams running in behind. You know, I only want the strikers. So this just allows a little bit more flexibility and just a little bit more stability with my formation. But I'm still able to dominate the ball and I'm still able to look for passes in behind. Just now that it's only the strikers, it's not the whole team. And then offensive width, 60 very comfortable on that width you don't need lots of width in this formation because the two cams do drift around and you don't have a lot of width especially because we're not going to have the fullbacks going forward so you don't need to be super wide so 60 pretty comfortable you don't want to be super narrow because then it's just going to come quite predictable if you go super narrow everyone's just going to read that you're going to pass the ball inside all the time because you have no width so you have to stay a little bit wide and then players in the box free kicks and corners uh, we've gone for six three and one just real personal preferences, whatever you fancy in those spots. Now, in terms of the instructions, Edison is on comes across his sweep keeper. That is obviously a given, I think, for goalkeepers. Now, Edison is a pretty bad goalkeeper, in my opinion. Hopefully, I can get myself maybe an Allison or something. He seems very, very good. But keeper always wants to be on comes across and sweep keeper, as we've made a video on that. So you definitely want to follow those instructions there. In terms of the centre backs, of course, they want to be on stay back while attacking. That's pretty standard. In terms of the full backs. Now, Ricardo Pereira and Robertson, we used to play with these guys on balance. Now, uh, I've decided to change them off balance, and this was because, again, I was getting countered a lot, and I I didn't anticipate everybody to have the maybe quality of teams that they had. So I was playing on balance, having my fullbacks going forward, creating lots of chances, but I kept getting you know spammed up the wing by Timo Werner's and Dembele's and Sane's. I didn't anticipate every single person having these players so I decided that I had to switch the fullbacks to stay back while attacking. So I can bring the, the the interceptions up to normal interceptions now because we have them on stay back while attacking. So I just think that gives you also a little bit more solid solidarity in defence. So it's just going to kind of tighten up that defence a little bit, but you are going to lose a little bit going forwards. But the reason why we turned down the width on the offence was because now the fullbacks aren't going forward, so we don't have that width with those guys anymore they still get involved in build-up play but they just don't overlap and again not really necessary because crossing's not super overpowered at the moment now in terms of Pogba and Alan I've got these guys on cut passing lanes which I think is pretty standard cover center but I've got them on balanced attack I don't have them on the stay back while attacking instruction now some people might like to have them on stay back while attacking if you want a little bit more stability uh, a little bit more solidness in defense then by all means change these guys but the reason why i have these guys on balance is just because i want this formation to be a little bit more offensive you know and even though these guys are playing as dms i want them to be involved in the builder when you have them on stay back they really stay back and it can kind of just leave just the four guys up top to do all the attacking and if you do you are playing someone who is sitting a little bit deeper maybe they have eight men behind the ball for example very hard to break them down so i do want these guys getting forwards and getting involved in the attack and if you have the right players, they still get back and defend. You know, Pogba, Alan, maybe they're not the most mobile of DMs. Maybe if you had a Kante and a Lorente in here, maybe. A little bit more uh, legs in that midfield, so you'd be able to get back into position a little bit quicker. But these guys do a very good job, and they do exactly what I want. Alan's maybe not the right player to pair with Pogba. Maybe if you had a Bruno Fernandes in here, because I'm playing with them on balance. But ultimately, if you have a little bit more attacking, not super attacking midfielders, but if you have some kind of players like Pogba in here, they do a brilliant job in here. We then got Firmino and Bernardo Silva. And I'm a massive fan of Bernardo Silva. I've really come to like him. And especially now that I've made this little tweak and I've turned off the direct passing, Bernardo Silva seems to be really coming to life for me in this team. Obviously, we've got them both on free roam and get into the box. But Silva's kind of dribbling. The way now he drifts inside, links up with the strikers. He just is very, very good, those type of players in this formation. So you definitely kind of want your twinkle toes type cams maybe for me no for me he hasn't hasn't been that great i'm looking to uh, replace him so really you want kind of those sort of low center of gravity type players like your bernardo Silva's. phil foden might be a great option to have actually on this left hand side just guys like that that are going to drift around that are going to be very good at linking up very good at dribbling these are the sorts of guys you want in these positions because now they're not always going to be running in behind they're actually going to be running with the ball you do want players that can obviously look and slide those passes into Vardy and Lukaku up top now in terms of Vardy and Lukaku up top we've obviously got Vardy stay central and getting behind we've got Lukaku on target man now there's three different scenarios that you can play really up front we've got Lukaku 
on stay central and target man so if you have a big bulky striker you can have him on target man if you have two speed merchants then you can obviously put them both on stay central and get in behind obviously now just the strikers are going to be running in behind so it's going to obviously give you still the strength in you know defense but also give you the threat in behind and the third option is if you have for example one striker who's super fast and then one who's kind of a bit more of a playmaker you can have one of them on false nine and you can have one of them on getting behind it really depends on what sort of strikers you have so if you was playing let's say Mbappe and Neymar up front you'd have Mbappe on say central getting behind you'd have Neymar on a false nine just so he can drop in slightly behind Lukaku be a center forward and just link up a little bit with the two cams kind of a little bit becomes a 4-2-3-1 but he's caught sort of a center forward not a cam so really depends on the strikers you have but at the moment with the guys that I've got we've got Vardy who's the quicker striker on getting behind and Lukaku is going to be on the target man so it really depends who you've got up front but I have experimented with all three of those and I do think the stay central getting behind and the false nine is probably the best one uh, so if you can get those players, I would recommend that one. But these are the tactics and instructions for the 4222. And this, for me, I think at the moment is my favorite formation and what I think is the best formation and the best tactics to use right now in FIFA 22. So make sure you do drop a thumbs up if you did enjoy this video. Let me know how these tactics go for you down in the comment sections. Make sure you do subscribe as well if you are new to the channel. It would be much appreciated. But that is all for today, guys. Have an awesome day. I'm out.